Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for joining the Sunday School of the Church of Jesus Christ. We honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We honor our pastor, Bishop John T. Leslie Jr. and Lady Louise Leslie, our assistant pastor, Jesus Gerald and Robert Taylor, and Sister Melinda Taylor, our pastoral assistants, Evangelist Margaret Williams and Evangelist Doris Thompson. We'd like to greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. And now at this time, our pastor is going to come with the opening prayer, and then he will introduce our teacher. And then I'll come back at 11.15 with a few announcements. And then we'll hear back from Deacon Collins and then Bishop Leslie for final remarks and benediction. Now let's receive our pastor, Bishop Leslie. Praise the Lord, everyone. Certainly we thank the Lord for the opportunities given us uh, to feed off of his word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let us pray. Father, in your precious name, again, we're so glad that you woke us up this morning. We were clothed. We were in our right mind. We had the use and activities of our limbs, blood yet running warm in our veins, my God, and we still had a mind to worship and serve you in the beauty of wholeness. Bless us, Lord, as we study your word today. Anoint our teacher, give her exactly what we have made of, and help us to apply your word to our lives so that when the enemy comes against us like a flood, we can lift the word up against the enemy. Bless us and let us be blessed of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. And again, thank the Lord for uh, the opportunity he's given us to study his word in Sunday school. Uh, our teacher this morning is Evangelist Lena Horch. I'm going to turn it over to her right now. God bless you, Evangelist Horch. Thank you so much, Bishop, and praise the Lord, everyone. Giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to my pastor, uh, the Honorable Bishop John T. Leslie, Jr., and to my First Lady, Sister Louise Leslie, and to District Elder Robert Taylor, and to his companion, Sister Melinda Taylor, and to the pastoral assistants, um, Evangelist Margaret Williams and Evangelist Doris Thompson. And we want to say praise the Lord to everyone. Amen. Especially to our superintendent. We thank God for him also. Amen. We thank God for the word, for his word. And uh, we, 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 we just know that God is going to move on today. We just, just got that feeling. Uh, God has been blessing I blessed us uh, such a way in the morning service. Oh my gosh, it was just awesome how God moved. But today we're talking about spiritual weapons. Spiritual weapons is our subject. And those of you that do not have your Sunday school book is coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 through 12. And also uh, you drop down to verses 17 and 18. And the related scriptures is 1 Corinthians 2 and 1 through 16 and Ephesians 6 and 10 through 18. The time, probably AD 56 and from Macedonia is the place. Uh, our golden text in its entirety, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. And that's 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Amen. God is an awesome God. And we are here just to uh, give you an encourage, encouraging word. Last week's lesson, we were talking in chapter 5, we were talking about ambassador for Christ and uh, being reconciled, how the Lord Jesus uh, died on the cross and reconciled us back to himself. Amen. Uh, Apostle Paul uh, was a Jew and also a Roman citizen. He was also a Pharisee. Paul was present at the stoning of Stephen. Paul was on his way to Damascus to arrest the citizens of uh, the Christians. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shone around about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuteth thy me? Amen. And he said, Who are thy Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thy persecuted. Say, it is hard for you to kick against the prick. 
And he trembling and astonished and said, Lord, what will thy have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thy must do. Apostle Paul rose up, he was blind at that time. He was blind for three days, he rose up. He went into the city and God had talked to Ananias to come and talk to Paul. And at that time, Paul, um, he, when he laid hands on Paul, Paul received the Holy Ghost, scales fell from his eyes, glory to God. And Paul was baptized in Jesus' name. So Paul had that powerful name, hallelujah, resting in him. Paul had to constantly identify himself as the apostle Paul, uh, as the apostolic uh, person. Uh, Paul says, not by the will of man, not by the will of man, but by Jesus Christ himself. He is the one that called me. Glory to God. Paul was talking to the Corinthians in chapter three. He said, and our brethren could not speak to you as unto spiritual but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. He said, I fed you with milk and not with meat. For here the two ye were not able to bear it, and neither now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying, strife, and division, are you not carnal and walk as men? Paul is constantly trying to constantly, constantly uh, uh, let them know who he is, but he knows that they are carnal minded, they're carnal minded people. And Paul is constantly giving them the words, are you not carnal? I, 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 it's time for you to eat some meat now. Uh, glory to God. And after we have been in the church for a long time, it's time to start eating meat. It's time to take something. It's time to stand. Uh, uh, Paul is trying to let them know it's time now for you to stand up for Jesus. It's time for you to uh, suffer uh, long sufferings now and, and do the will of God and do what God would have you to do. Paul said, the greater the suffering for Christ's sake, in this present world, the greater will be the glory in eternity. Glory to God. And then also the fifth chapter, he says, um, he was talking about eternal building in heaven. And for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. Uh, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Glory to God, hallelujah. And this earthly house is steadily dissolving, hallelujah. As we age, it's steadily dissolving, glory to God. But if it's dissolved, we have a house, hallelujah. Oh, a building of God not made with hands, eternal in the heaven. Paul suffered, he suffered much and he's teaching them how to go through in the sixth chapter. He said, but in all things approving ourselves as the minister of God in much patient, uh, in affliction, in necessity, uh, in distress, in labor, in watching, in fasting, uh, in praying. God, uh, Paul had to do all of it and he had to have patience to go through and patience to deal with this Corinthians church. Uh, glory to God, Paul, hallelujah. Uh, he was afflicted in many, many ways. He was stoned and left for dead and glory to God uh, in need of things, in need of of water, in need of food, uh, in distress, uh, uh, mind being all stressed out, uh, but the God that he served, he was well able, hallelujah, to bring him through, and he knew that he had to depend on God, he had to rest in the Lord, uh, glory to God, um, Paul said, I reckon um, that this suffering of the, this present time is not worthy 
worthy to be compared uh, with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Uh, glory to God. So saints, if you go through, uh, continue to rest in the Lord, uh, knowing that, hallelujah, that the suffering of this present time is not even worthy to, to be compared with the glory that's going to be, that shall be revealed Glory to God, hallelujah. And then we come on down to the seventh chapter and we look at, hallelujah, we look at Paul sends Timothy, hallelujah, to talk to that Corinthian church and Timothy couldn't handle them. So he turns and he sent Titus and Titus' mission was successful. Glory to God, uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But Paul had to send a letter to impact uh, uh, the present of uh, glory to God of what Timothy need to do to get over to the church. Uh, and after that, they, uh, Titus, Titus sent Titus and Titus were able then, hallelujah, uh, to bring the church into a line at that time. And looking at the eighth chapter of, of 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, and we look at the uh, Paul's talking about in giving, 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 glory to God. And he wanted them to give to the mother's church and give to the poor saints and not set and eat before them and not offer them food. Give to them and supply their need. And then he said, but this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Huh? He that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? He said, every man has his purpose in his heart. Uh, so let him give, not grudgingly, not of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. So once he leaves that area, and then he comes down to our blessing, glory to God, because that was the ninth chapter. Now we're in the 10th chapter, glory to God. And uh, we're looking at, um, hallelujah, gentle and boldness in Christ, glory to God. And we're going to read down to the sixth verse. Thank you, Jesus. He said, now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in present am based among you, but being absent, I'm bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and casting down imagination and every high thing that exhort itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought uh, to the obedience of Christ and having in readiness uh, to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Glory to God. Paul uh, uh, came to them in meekness and gentleness, and Paul is letting them know uh, that, hey, uh, uh, I'm not coming to you uh, speaking, uh, uh, responding to how you are acting, but I'm coming to you in meekness and in gentleness. And, uh, and he, Paul is reminded that Jesus, when Jesus was at the table, the last supper with Judas, and he knew that Judas was a uh, uh, had this uh, thirty pieces of silver in his pocket. But but Jesus handled him very carefully and very respectfully. He did not come down on him. He handled him in the Christ-like way. Glory to God. Uh, hallelujah. But uh, and then Jesus say, uh, one of you uh, at the table is going to betray me. Uh, and uh, they asked, they asked, who is it? Who is it? And Jesus said, the one that I give sup to. And he gave it to Judith. Uh, but Jesus had a way of blind 
blinding the minds of the eyes, uh, uh, blinding them. Because see, you don't see, you see through your eyes are just a window, but you see through your mind. So he blinded their mind so that they could not understand who he was giving this up to. And it would not be revealed to them who Judith was and what Judith was about to do. Glory to God. But God, huh, God is using Paul in such a mighty way. And the second verse, he said, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with, with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. Paul did not let the frustration uh, uh, overwhelm him. He was able, able to speak to them in a Christ-like way, uh, controlling uh, what came out of his mouth. And our pastor taught us many times that words are spirit, uh, words are spirit. And once those words come out of your mouth, you cannot take those words back uh, because they're spirit, glory to God. Hallelujah. Paul spoke to them in meekness and gentleness of Christ. Paul said in all, in all that Paul did, everywhere he went, glory to God, he endeavored to display a Christ-like attitude. Hallelujah. The Corinthians accused Paul of tough in his letter, but timid when he was with them. Glory to God. But in other words, they thought he was all talk and no action. But claim, some claim that when he was away from them, he was a big, bad, tough guy. But when he was face to face with them, he backed down. Glory to God. Paul knew how to use wisdom because Jesus wanted Paul uh, Paul, Paul was a chosen vessel of Christ, you know, and uh, uh, God was using Paul in such a mighty way. Paul preferred a peaceful approach, glory to God, hallelujah, but many of the Corinthians still doubted Paul, glory to God. They didn't believe that Paul was called by Jesus, glory to God, but Paul, hallelujah, he was an aw oh, he's an awesome man. And then we're coming down to the third verse. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Glory to God. And you look at the fifth uh, Romans 8 and 5, and it says, For they uh, that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. And drop down to the 13th verse and say, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall do, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do modify, modify, kill that old flesh, uh, the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Paul is giving them, he wanted them to know. Now he already done talked and talked and talked, trying to keep communication open up, restraining himself from, from when they treated him wrong. He restrained himself, glory to God. And he uh, did not speak what was on his mind or what was what was uh, uh, in his brain, in his head, because it did not drop into his heart because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak in. So it did not drop into Paul's heart, uh, how they treated him and how they handled him. It did not, glory to God. Paul was really trying to keep the doors open for communication. Uh, glory to God. Going down to the fourth verse, um, say, for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, uh, the weapon of our warfare. This is a mind thing. Uh, uh, glory to God. Uh, if you, uh, hallelujah, if you sow a thought, you're going to reap an act. Hallelujah. If you sow an act, you're going to reap and a habit. If you saw a habit, you're going to reap a character. If you saw a character, you're going to reap a destiny. And then you saw a destiny, it all started in the mind. 
So we got to control what goes, what comes out of the mouth and what we are entertained and what we are able to cast down because the enemy is going to forever uh, try and bring uh, God's people down. They felt that they were periodic over Paul and in rank, uh, in knowledge, in eloquency, uh, in speech. Uh, they felt that uh, uh, Paul could not equal to them glory to God. But Paul wanted them to be saved. So he handled this thing very carefully. Uh, spiritual weapons, thanks of God, is the word of God. This is your spiritual weapon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And your spiritual weapon being the word of God, uh, then we do not just throw God's word around any kind of way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, it's like a, a soldier being prepared to go into war. And, and this is a warfare, uh, the, uh, the soul war against the flesh and uh, uh, against the flesh and the flesh war against the the spirit and these two, they are contrary to each other because they war against each other. But the greatest is going to win. And that is your spirit. If you stay focused on Jesus, oh, glory to God. Oh. In Ephesians, glory to God in uh, 6 and 11, say, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to uh, to stand against the wise of the devil. Say, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, glory to God, against power, against the rules of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, uh, glory to God. So we must put on a whole armor of God. And, and when we put on the armor, uh, then we'll be able to withstand in the evil days because the days are, hallelujah, evil, glory to God. And then he say, Stay in having, therefore, glory to God, having your lawns girt about with truth. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Truth is God's word. And having your breastplate of righteousness, uh, word hide and down into your heart. Hide the word into your heart. Glory to God. That we may not sin against thee. Glory to God. And your feet. Shown with the preparation of, of the gospel of peace. Uh, hallelujah, the prince of peace. Uh, glory to God. He's the only one can bring peace to this body, this mind. Glory to God. And above all, taking the shield of faith. Uh, faith in God's word. Uh, faith to stand. Uh, faith to hold on to his word. Uh, hallelujah, word where he shall be able uh, to quench all fiery darts of the wicked. Uh, when the darts are thrown at you, glory to God, and they shall come, they will come. Hallelujah. The word of God would lift up a standard against the enemy. Hallelujah. And taking the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. Praying always. Uh, Glory to God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance, uh, all glory to God and, and supplication for all saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have to keep our armor on. Saints of God, when we go to bed, you do not take the armor off. Uh, when I uh, um, uh, uh, the army, when the when, um, individuals in a warfare, he keep the armor on at all times. Glory to God! You cannot take it off. You cannot, and that is the Holy Ghost. Uh, glory to God! You stay full. God wants us to stay full of the Holy Ghost, full of His Spirit. Uh, Glory to God, hallelujah. And they were teaching glory to God, saying that Paul was inadequate. Uh, this this uh, salvation that Paul was teaching, uh, it would not save, uh, it would not save them that it was necessary for them to keep the law of Moses, uh, including practicing the circumcision. 
Oh, my God, my God. God brought them out of bondage. And it, it doesn't make sense for them to go back into bondage because God has brought them out. Once God brings us out of bondage, uh, when we got saved, hallelujah, we came out of bondage. Uh, so, therefore, do not go back into bondage. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Glory to God. Keep your weapon. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Keep your weapon on you at all times, because this is a warfare, uh, and it begins in the mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It's the battlefield of the mind. My God, my God. And then casting down, the fifth verse, says, cast down imagination and every high thing that exhort itself against the knowledge of God and bringing it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. All uh, those thoughts that come to your mind, we have to know what to cast down, glory to God, because the enemy is going to bring thoughts uh, uh, to your mind. So you got to know how to cast them down and Glory to God, and God is the healer. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, even sickness sometimes, uh, uh, the enemy brings sickness on us. Glory to God, cast that thing down in the name of Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Once we receive the Holy Ghost, uh, we have power to endure hardness as a good soldier. We have the power to stand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, like Evangelist, Evangelist Sabrina Jackson say, uh, uh, he's able. Glory to God, hallelujah, do exceedingly and abundantly uh, above all that we can ask or think, uh, hallelujah, according to the power that worketh in us, uh, hallelujah, cast down all those imaginations. When things come against Christ, cast it down, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mental illness, uh, cast it down. Oh, spirit of depression, cast it down. Glory to God, uh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Fear, cast it down. Hatred, cast it down. Uh, hallelujah. Confusion, cast it down. My God, my God, my God. Cast down everything uh, uh, that exhorts itself against the knowledge of God. Uh, glory to God and bring it into captivity uh, to the obedience of Christ. My God, my God, and having a readiness uh, in our heart, uh, glory to God, to revenge all disobedient, uh, hallelujah, and bring it, oh God, when your obedience is fulfilled, when you're staying full of the Holy Ghost, glory to God, then you can come against all disobedience, glory to God, thank you, Jesus, uh, oh God is an awesome God, uh, Let's go to 7 through 12. Let's read seven script, uh, scripture 7 through 12. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So do ye look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ's, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ's, even so are we, are we Christ's. For though I should boast somewhat more uh, of our authority, which the Lord had given us for edification and not for your destruction. Uh, I should not be ashamed, glory to God, that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letter. For this letter, say they, are weakly and powerful, but that his body present is weak and his speech contemptible. Let such a one think this, that such as we are in word by letter, when we are absent, such will be also indeed when we are present. For we dare not ourselves of the number, not, dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that, that command themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Glory to God. 
Paul is steadily trying to help these people. Paul says, let every soul, let every soul, Romans 13 and 1 and 2 said, let every soul be subject to the higher power, but there is no power but of God. Ah, uh, God is one that gives all power. God has given the power to the enemy, to the devil. The, the power still came from God. That be, hallelujah, though, that be are uh, ordained of God. And it said, whatsoever, whosoever, therefore, resists the power, resists the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive of themselves damnation. Paul is letting them know, hey, you're going to receive damnation if you resist. He said, I, 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 I thought I could um, boast somewhat more of our authority, but they're not able to take it. They're still drinking milk, glory to God, which the Lord had given to us for edification. Uh, I'm supposed to be able to boast in Christ Jesus uh, uh, that your spirit will be edified and, and not to, for your destruction. Uh, it's not to bring you down. It's to edify your spirit. Glory to God. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ was the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Thank you, Lord. Uh, the ninth verse said that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letter. Why and why are they allowing uh, the letter to terrify them. Paul said, I wasn't trying to terrify you, just trying to help you to live right, really, just trying to help you to get it right. Glory to God. Trying to help you to, to live a holy life, to turn to Jesus. Oh, he said, I'm not trying to terrify you by the letter. Say, for this letter, say they are weakly and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. So they're looking at the letter, saying your your letter is, is your letter is weightly and powerful. But when we see you in person, your bodily presence is weak, and your speech contemptible. In other words, uh, uh, you you're contempted in uh, what you are attempting to say or what you need to say. You're not saying it. Uh, they just wanted to bring Paul down. Uh, um, and they was they was uh, walking in the flesh. Uh, they were walking in the five senses and uh, their emotions, uh, uh, their knowledge. Uh, glory to God! But uh, in order to pre present knowledge, in order to um, to expound on God's word, God has to uh, open your understanding. Uh, uh, so that you will understand the word, glory to God. But Paul had confidence in God's word that God, the God that he served was able, hallelujah, to bring him through. Uh, God was able to keep him, glory to God. And uh, no matter what they said or what they did, uh, Paul knew that he was more than a conqueror through him that loved us. Uh, glory to God. And so are we. Uh, we are more than a conqueror. Glory to God. Uh, hallelujah. There is nothing that can bring God's people down. Uh, but Jesus said, upon this rock, uh, I will build my church and, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, glory to God. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, Oh, glory to God. Jesus had told us uh, that even the very gates of hell, it cannot stand against the spiritual might that God bestowed upon his people, upon the church. And we are the church of the living God. Woo, glory to God. My God, my God. God used Moses' staff. Uh, to signify the power of God. Uh, told Moses to hold your staff out. 
glory to God, and it got so heavy in Moses' hand, and, and uh, they put stones on the Moses' arm to hold up the staff, uh, representing the power of God. Uh, when David went to fight Goliath, my God, my God, he went to fight Goliath. Ah, uh, he told Goliath, you come uh, with sword and spear, but I come in the name of the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. So uh, we all we got to do is show up, show up, and God will fight our battle. Hallelujah. He said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Glory to God. Uh, uh, all Paul had to do was go on, show up and stand there and see the salvation of God work on his behalf. Oh, thank you, Lord. David called him his refuse, uh, uh, the very God, hallelujah, in, in whom he trusts. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. When Joshua uh, went to fight, uh, to bring down the walls of Jericho, uh, to take Jericho, uh, Joshua, all Joshua had to do was follow God's instruction Oh, glory to God. Uh, follow his instruction. And before they went to fight, uh, uh, Joshua saw a man standing and Joshua goes to him and say, are you for us? Oh, you have an adversary. Uh, and the man says, um, I'm the host of the, of the of, I'm the host of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So Joshua, all Joshua had to do was girl up the laws of his mind and just constantly depend on God. Oh, knowing that God is going to do it. God was going to bring down the city and going to give it over to them. So all he had to do was be there, stand there, do what God told him to do. And uh, as they walked around Jericho, uh, Ah, thank you, Lord. And they walked around and and uh, when they, uh, 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 the six days and then on the seventh day, they walked seven times. And uh, when God said, uh, uh, shout now, and now they began to shout, glory to God. And when they began to shout and break the pitchers and blow the trumpet, hallelujah, and the walls came down, uh, hallelujah, the power of God. Uh, we're just talking about the power of God. My God, my God, walls in your life, saints of God. Uh, hallelujah. You praise God and you thank God for victory uh, through, your, through the blood of Jesus. Uh, and those walls, uh, walls that are in your life, uh, the walls that the enemy have brought, uh, they shall come down. My God, my God, uh, and the 12th verse say, for we dare not make ourselves of the number uh, or compare ourselves with some that commend uh, uh, themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves is not wise. Measuring themselves by themselves, comparing themselves to themselves, Paul said, this is not wise. This is not a wise thing for you to do. Hallelujah. Or measure yourself by the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Glory to God. My God, my God. And we're going to go down to the last two verses. Amen. Um, 17 and 18. Uh, boasting, boasting in Christ. Uh, say, for not he that commanded himself. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. 17. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commanded himself is approved, but whom the Lord commanded. Glory to God. Paul is saying, if you're going to glory, you glory in the God of, our, of, of your salvation. Glory in the God. All they were doing was lifting up themselves in knowledge, in wisdom, in philosophy. Uh, felt that they were superior over Paul and, and, uh, and others. And they were unlearned and uneducated and they were foreigners. Uh, uh, but when we, when we glory, we glory in the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. These people... Um, they just, they was just all mixed up. No good thing dwelleth in the flesh. No matter how much knowledge or intelligence you have, or you have accomplished, the ability to present that knowledge 
It has to come from God. Cannot come from man. Glory to God. So we have to look to Jesus uh, for all things. Uh, Jesus is our creator. Glory to God. He's, uh, he's the one that gives us the, the, the ability uh, to expound on his word, uh, to learn or uh, to understand his word. He's the one that gives us the ability. We're just tools in the master's hand. We are his tools. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, uh, our pastor sing this song uh, sometimes. He said, I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus is with me on him. I can depend. I know I have salvation. I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold out to the end. Glory to God. We got to be determined to hang in there. We got to be determined to hold out to the end. We got to stay in prayer. Glory to God. Keep God's word before us. Uh, glory to God. The spiritual weapons are uh, uh, God's word. It's truth. It's righteousness. Hallelujah. It's the gospel of peace. It's faith. It's salvation. It's the word of God. It's praying in the spirit. These are your spiritual weapons. Glory to God. Keep your spiritual weapons trimmed, hallelujah, keep them before you at all times, glory to God, and God bless you, and I love you in Jesus' name, I hope you've gotten something out of God's word, God bless you. Thank you, Evangelist Horwich, another powerful Sunday School lesson, thank you very much. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord Sunday School scholars, truly Evangelist hearts have taught this lesson this morning, praise God, on spiritual weapons. And I don't know about you, praise God, but I tell you, it was like the, the fires were just burning, praise God. What an awesome lesson, praise God. We still, as we see, as we deal with Brother Paul, and as he continues to deal with the Corinthians, praise God, huh? he's dealing with a carnal set of people. huh? You and I want to bring this thing close to home to ourselves, praise God, to where we don't want to be found in the same place that the Corinthians were found in, praise God. These folks, to a certain extent, not all of them, but for the most part, they were backward in their thinking, praise God. Hmm? Remember what kind of people we were, are dealing with when we are dealing with the Corinthians, praise God. Hmm? They were people all about great education. They were people all about, they were great thinkers. Remember the Aristotles, the Plato, the Socrates, and all of those great thinkers, praise God. Hmm? Uh, pushing education, which is a great thing. But education and great thinking has its place, its proper place. Remember also that we said earlier that this is where uh, our, what we now know as the Olympics is where it started, praise God, to where they uh, prided themselves in great competition and who was the strongest and who was the fastest, praise God. Hmm? They was all into flush. I say they were all into flush, praise God. Hmm? But what we got to remember, praise God, is the one that had come to them and had actually worked with them for a period of 18 months and now was writing them letters, praise God. Hmm? What better individual in order to deal with them than Paul, praise God? Because hmm? that's how Paul started out, in the flesh, hmm? thinking he could pride himself and boast himself and what he did. And he could basically earn salvation just like some of the other Jews thought, praise God. Hmm? But what Paul was trying to get across to these Corinthians, praise God, hmm, is that God has to have the preeminence. I don't care how much you know, huh? I don't care what university you attend, I don't care what kind of clothes you wear, what kind of house you stay in, or what kind of food you eat, praise God. God has to have the preeminence. And he will have it, praise God. Hmm? Remember what the scriptures tell us, to be carnal minded is what? Is death. Hmm? We have to remind ourselves of that, praise God. For the enemy is always working on us. We don't have to look at nobody else. We can just take our index finger, turn it around to the center of our chest, huh? And point to ourselves that the enemy is always trying to work on us. He's always trying to get us to back into salvation. I say back into it. Backwards, praise God. 
He's trying to get us to put our finances first. He's trying to get us to put our degrees first. Huh? He's trying to get us to put our families first. He's trying to get us to put our pride for ways. Huh? The thoughts of pride that we have, our intellect, our great oratory, praise God. That, that's why they was telling Paul, when you're present with us, you have no great uh, uh, presence about yourself. You, you're very weak looking. Huh? You're, even what you talk about is contemptible. In other, in other words, they disrespected sometimes the way that he was coming across. But what they had to remember, praise God, is huh? like from last week, uh, scriptures, and I read this one is verse 17 out of five in uh, chapter five, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, if Paul had wanted to go neck and neck with them by the flesh, Tell me he wouldn't have been able to do it. Huh? A Pharisee of Pharisee, praise God. Hmm? This man learned and sat at the feet of Gamaliel, praise God. But what he did learn, praise God, through the trial and the experiences that he went through is that God has to have the preeminence, praise God. God has to be the filter, praise God. And these folks were still looking at themselves. They wanted to, just like the Jews, they wanted to be able to glory in themselves. Huh? They wanted to act like they had earned salvation, huh? You get nowhere with God like that, praise God. You got to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, huh? That he will lift you up, that he will bless you, praise God. Hmm? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We already went through this morning, praise God. Hmm? Our weapons is the faith in God's word. Hmm? We have to tell our finances, about what kind of God we serve, praise God. Hmm? We, we, God is not expecting us to tell us about all of these things that we own and all of these things that we pride ourselves in, Lord. Uh-uh, God is first. I say God is first. He has the preeminence and he will take no other position in your life. Oh, glory! I know what I'm talking about, praise God. Hmm? I, he has to be the head. He has to be the first, praise God. Hmm? What does the scripture tell us? The name of the Lord, just his name, is a strong tower, praise God. These folk will walk around, praise God, with their, their big biceps and big chest, praise God, thought that they could do this and they could do that, and they were better than this one and better than that one, praise God. Huh? They were carnal. They say, Paul, you don't talk like some of our orators. They can talk better than you. But what Paul already told him, or what have you, is I didn't come to you with $15 and $20 words, but I came in the power and in the strength of God's word, praise God. You and I have to come in the strength and in the power of God's word. You heard what Evangelist uh, uh, Hodge was saying, praise God, about David, huh? What did he tell Goliath? He said, you come with sword and shield. Lord, have mercy, huh? But I come in the name of the Lord. You and I, as a people of God, we have to come in the name of the Lord. That's when we get the victory. I said, that's when we get the victory. Not when we showing out. Not when we patting ourselves on our own back, praise God. And as she said, Mary is measuring yourself by other men and comparing yourselves with how other men, how far they went, praise God. Ain't nothing in that but death. That's carnality. Huh? This is a powerful lesson, praise God. I'm going to back away from it right there, praise God. Hmm? Because this thing is too hot to handle. We need a series with this one. I said we need a series because, you know, a lot of times we're looking in scripture and we're reading about Old Testament stuff or what have you. But this is our zip code. This is where we live. This is what we need. Stop casting it off on other folks. You need to start at your front door. Huh? In Jesus' name. Next week, praise God, we're moving on. Should be the, what is it, the last lesson of the session, lesson 13. Hmm? All right, in the scriptures, for those of you that want to write the, jot them down, praise God. The scriptures for next week's lesson is, and have I gone past it? Okay, we should be in 2 Corinthians 12th chapter, verses 1 through 10, praise God. What are some awesome lessons we're dealing with, praise God. We're going to go ahead and turn this uh, portion back into the hands of our bishop, John T. Leslie Jr., in Jesus' name. <laughs> Uh, we have a powerful lesson on the agenda today, spiritual weapons.
And this is so important because the enemy that we're using to, uh, to deal with our spiritual weapons is the devil. And he is in the a spiritual realm also. So we got a spiritual enemy, praise him, that is not visible at all. And so in order to deal with him, we got to deal with him with our spiritual weapons. <laughs> this is powerful evangelist Lawrence. God bless you. Thank you so much for the powerful teaching this morning. And also our superintendent Deacon Collins uh, for his spiritual and my God association to what we have heard from evangelist uh, Horge. And certainly thank the Lord for, for such a word. And that's why sun school is so very, very important. You hear me talk about sun school all the time. Sun school is so very important because we're dealing with word, and we're dealing with scriptures, subject matters, and we wouldn't ordinarily deal with it when you're just, just reading the Bible through, you know, uh, uh, without dealing with the specific areas like we get in sun school. Sun school is so very, very important. And that's why I encourage everybody to attend sun school from the pulpit to the door, praise him. Everybody should be a part of Sunday school. And parents, let me tell you again, make sure that your children, or you are raising your children uh, in Sunday school. Sunday school is so very, very important because Sunday school breaks down for your children, breaks down the words so the children can understand it. We have some dynamite uh, teachers, praise the Lord, and all of our uh, young people, uh, that uh, being raised up in, a, in a, the home of a saint, it should be Sunday school should be a part of the raising of our children. Certainly, we thank the Lord for Sunday school. God bless you. God bless you. And I encourage everybody to be in Sunday school. And also remember our uh, procedure. Also, is after Sunday school, we uh, have. Uh, our Sunday school offering. So as you're giving in the various ways that we are giving, uh, then throw the Sunday school in there like we have done down through the years. Praise him. When we give God the glory for our staff of Sunday school teachers and the dynamic leadership of Deacon Collins. Praise the Lord. Sunday school is so very, very important. All right. I think that's all I want to say. Praise him. Uh, so let us pray. Father, in your precious name, Jesus, again, we're so grateful for Sunday school. Thank you so much because we esteem your word more highly than our necessary food. And we thank the Lord for the Sunday school because Sunday school is giving us soul food. Now, God, so that when the enemy comes against us like a flood, we can lift a standard up against the enemy and have strength to fight that devil because that devil's out to kill, steal, and destroy. But you came that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Bless the Church of Jesus Christ and the Sunday School Department and give us that which we have need of constantly in our Sunday School study. This we actually do for us in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Peace be unto the saints. Peace be multiplied.